That's kind of the general way that we, we go about things, right? And so th those numbers, I think they're still trying to finalize it, so I won't, I won't confirm it one way or the other, but think of it along those lines, right? Uh, several big questions with small parts to each question, 75 minutes to 80 minutes long, roughly 50 to 60 marks. Uh, make sure you bring your T card, right? Very, very important because we're going to go around and check your T cards to make sure that you are who you say you are. Bring your one eight and a half by 11 age sheet. Write as small as you want, as big as you want, both sides, pink, yellow, blue, doesn't matter what color. Um, do whatever you want. You got one sheet. And then bring your calculators. The calculator rules are the same as last semester. Okay? Any questions on the midterm? All right. If you have tutorial sessions, right, go, go attend your tutorial sessions, talk to your TAs, get some more insight. Practice, practice, practice. Question. Do I know how many questions? No. No, I don't. Actually, I, I do, but I won't, I won't tell you here. Uh, um, and to be honest, it doesn't matter, right? What you need to know is how long the exam is and how much time you should be spending on each question. Um, anything else? So we, we're, we're, covering, we're covering the last topic here. I, I brought it up last class, right? Okay, settle down. We're testing, are we good? Okay, so last, last class, we, we just, we wrapped up relative motion analysis between two particles. Then we said there's another very important topic called dependent motion. When you see the word dependent, it means it's linked. Linked by a chain, linked by a string, linked by a rope, it doesn't matter, they're linked. Best examples that we have for all the problems that we present in assignments, in midterms, in finals, pulleys. And when we did these pulley examples, I basically said there were two major things that you always have to be cognizant of when you do these, these problems, right? The very first thing that I said was this major rule was that the rope has constant length, right? That is, that is the one big piece of information, right? So you're going you're gonna to go around and you're going to count your pieces and you're going to make sure that L is constant, right? That's the number one thing. Um, I also said that when you're counting these little bits of rope, you'll remember from last class, I highlighted bits that were in red, that I said, they don't matter. They're always going to be constant in length. They never change. Those aren't the things that matter. The ones that matter are the ones that do change. When you establish these variables, the SA and the SB, and here's the second most important part, it's basically your ability to define your reference line or datum lines. So define good datum lines, right? So what do I mean by that? I'll get to a new example today that shows that. You need to define good datum lines where you actually measure the rectilinear motion of the SA or the SB. Okay? Those are the two things that if you can, if you can do those two things, the math is dead easy, right? You're just taking derivatives and all, all you're looking for are those constants, right? Relative to each other, is VA moving with respect to VB two times as fast or three times as fast? So here's the next example. It's a complicated one. I'll give you some time to copy it off the board as I draw it. So we've got one pulley, two pulleys, three pulleys. Got a mass like that. Okay, there is our system. Okay, so then the question is, what is VB with respect to in terms of VA, right? So if VA is moving with at one meter per second, then what must VB be? How are they linked? Okay, so how do we, how do we tackle this problem? 
What's that? Define the define. Okay, so define that the length of the rope is constant. So 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 let's trace let's trace to see where the ropes are, uh, the rope that matters. There's one rope that links everything. It's actually this rope right here. So this goes all the way around this first pulley, comes back around here, loops around again, and comes all the way down here, and then attaches to A. Okay, so there there is a rope, and that is L is equal to constant. Nothing has changed with that, for sure. Um, I'll give you one more really important assumption. We always assume that in these cases where a block is attached to two pieces of rope, it doesn't rotate. In all our problems, particles like that don't rotate. So I'm going to make an important note here. Note, B does not rotate. OK, so for the purposes of this course, we're going to keep it simple. Right? They don't rotate. The whole thing will just translate up and down. OK. So we've established this. Now the second most important thing. We've got to pick the datum lines, and we've got to pick them really carefully so that you can establish the SA and the SB. Okay? Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna just indicate to you here, maybe the motion for A is actually down. Okay? If motion for A is down, we expect the motion for B to go up, okay? just because, again, the length has to be constant. Okay, so now where do we establish the datum line? How do we measure B from some reference? So last class, like clearly the reference should be the ceiling, but I made it very clear to you that all the bits sort of above this half of those, the, the, the pulleys, all of those don't really matter. So the more convenient datum line is just a little bit below the ceiling. That allows me to say the following. I can put a straight line down here as my position line, has my position, position coordinate, SB to this block. Okay? As long as you're always measuring to one reference point on the block, then you're in good shape. Okay, so now as this block goes up, your SB will go down. As this block goes down, your SB will increase. Okay? So that SB is a really, really good mark. Yeah. So how to get a good datum line? So, so I was basically saying something that cannot move. That's the number one thing. Ceiling is a really good one because it doesn't move. Um, and you could certainly do it from the ceiling. I've chosen just a little bit below the ceiling because it ignores all the little red bits of rope that I talked about previously. Right. So just sort of this part right here and that part right here and this part right here. You just sort of just ignore all of that. It doesn't really matter. Right, right. Yep, yep, and it doesn't matter. So, so I, could, I could clearly do it all the way down to here as well. Notice, notice that the only thing that's changing in both of those cases, whether I go down to the B or down to the pulley, I could also go down to here, right? right? I don't want to confuse you guys here, but ultimately here is just perfectly fine. Why? Because even as these ropes change lengths, Guess what else doesn't really change length? This bit right here. This bit right here will also stay constant, right? Like even if this bit were to shorten, this bit would stay constant. So the, the key thing is picking your datum line up here that's correct and then referencing it down to somewhere down here to a point which is fixed to the block in some way. So even the center of this pulley, because it's going to be allowed to go up and down, that point is exactly a certain distance away from the top of that block B, that distance is constant, right? OK, everyone's still following? OK, so in fact, let me, let me, let me, let me do that. Let me, let me just follow Leo's suggestion here. Leo says do the following, right? OK, so he says let's do it to the midpoint of this pulley and ignore down here. All of this stuff is going to be translating, right? So now that, that actually is really, really interesting. It means that when SB changes, it looks like this length is the length SB for a string, for the rope. This part is SB and this part is SB. Okay? And I'll get to that in a second. This is also a bit here of rope that's red. That doesn't matter. Okay, so what else, what else, can, we, what else can we do? If this is our first datum line, and I'm using this as reference for this block B, should that also be the reference line for SA? 
how many people think that is a perfectly good datum line for SA and we should just keep using it? How many people think I should pick another datum line? Okay, so if I were to pick another datum line, what would make the most sense? Remember, A is sliding up and down this incline, right? And I want a fixed point in space, and I want to know how, how far it's going to move. So, what's that? The bottom pulley, excellent, right? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a bottom pulley, and I'm going to angle it in such a way where I'm forcing myself to only consider its motion as rectilinear. That's hugely helpful because it means that my SA is right here. Okay, does that make sense to people? Two datum lines in this particular case. Reason being that the blocks are actually moving uh, not in the same direction, right? One is on an incline, the other is straight up and down. Okay, so now I'm going to go around and I'm going to count lengths of rope. There's one other really interesting bit of rope here that I want to in, uh, that I want to show you. This bit right here, from here, top pulley down to this bit, does that length of rope ever change? No, it actually never changes. I'm going to give this a new letter. I'm going to call this my H. Okay, and so now you will see what my length equation looks like. My length of the rope is constant, and it is equal to the following. It's equal to my SA down here. I'm going to now travel up the rope plus H. I'm going to go around the red bit that doesn't matter. One SB, two SBs, three SBs, okay, plus red bits of rope. And so you can, you can ignore those. So now what do you do? You take the derivative. L dot is the length of the rope. Never changes with time, so it's 0. And then this becomes your derivatives. This becomes dSA by dt plus dH by dt plus 3 dSB by dt. And therefore, H is always constant. This is also 0. These are nothing more than just your Vs. So this will be VA plus 3VB is equal to 0. And so finally, given the way that I've asked the question, what is VB in terms of VA? VB is equal to negative 1 third VA. OK? Question. OK, great question. The question is, how do I know where to draw the arrows for SA and SB? And what, how do I know if it's correct or not correct? It's actually a really, really good question, right? So again, I'm going to remind you to always keep in mind that for this course, we're going to only focus on rectilinear motion for these particles. They're not going to really, we're not going to worry about them going in curves and stuff. So if B is going up and down, Make sure that your SB is also measured up and down in that direction. Therefore, you should pick a reference line or a datum line that doesn't move. It's constant, right? And from there, you just drop down or go up to the object. Same thing here, right? Same thing here where I picked the datum line and I just basically went parallel to the direction of motion of that particle, and you're, and you're there. OK? Anything, anything else? OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another example. Obviously, there's lots of things to talk about in these problems. They get increasingly complex. Everyone's starting to also see a pattern. You get a pattern here. So I sort of I went, in this problem, I went around one pulley, and I noticed two little bits of rope. And clearly, the answer was, what was it? It was VA, VA is equal to 2VB, right? And then over here, I did three bits of rope, and it became you know, VA is 3VB. In other words, people design pulley systems taking this into account, right? If you want 
two objects to move with varying speeds, you want one to go up at a ratio with the other, then you just add pulleys to shorten the length, right? You know, so that's a, that's a design way. Uh, how do we know that H should be constant? How do we know that H is constant? Is, can H change? The, pulleys, the pulley here is not moving. Pulley here is fixed in space. Pulley here is fixed on the block. So this can't change, OK? And last question before I, well, two, two questions. Go ahead. OK, the question is, is it always going to be in just SA and SB? Uh, yeah, if, if, if you only have two particles and you've called them S, uh, A and B, then yes. There are problems that have three particles, A, B, and C. Right? And I'll show you, I'll show you a kind of an example at the end of the lecture on that. It'll, it'll generally be in this format because the whole point of what you're trying to get to is a relationship that relates one to the other. And they're usually in this in this closed form where you don't even need any numbers. You just want to know their dependence. You want to know that one is three times or two times more than the other one. They'll always be sort of in this fraction form. OK? Now, let me do uh, one more question here. Um, how is A such an open space that H is constant? What's that? How is H such an open space when H is constant? Because this rope goes all the way around, and these ropes are getting shorter. So let's, let's, OK, this whole rope is the same, the same rope. I'm going to now move this block A further down here. So this is the new position of A. It's down at the bottom of the block. So this rope is now longer. This part moves down here. This length is constant, but this now has to move up. So your block B is actually going to be here. It's moved up. All right, let's do another one. Yeah. Shh. Sorry, I can't hear the question. Go ahead. Uh, it, it, uh, um, Okay, so the question is, does the equation actually tell you something about direction? The answer is absolutely yes, because of the sign. The sign is a huge indicator for direction. But it's, it's general in a sense, because when I say dependent motion, and I leave the equation in that form, where just VB is equal to something VA, or VA is equal to something VB, um, what am I doing there? I'm really saying that you have the freedom and option to have the block go up or down the incline. right? If it goes up the incline, then SA is going to shorten, right? But what that means is the negative sign is an indicator. VB must be acting in the opposite way. So if VA goes up, the minus sign tells you VB must go down, right? That, that's the point of the minus sign. If I design a problem and it just so happens that both of them have to be positive, then the positive sign will indicate that as one lengthens, the other one will also lengthen some way, right? Okay. Let me go to this next example here. This one's an interesting one. A little bit of a twist. Okay, so block B hangs from a series of four pulleys. Um, oops.
OK, so here's the, here's the new problem, the new pulley system. And we're still interested in VA versus VB. OK. Is the rope going through the wall? Let's just say that the rope is going like around the wall. OK, so like, don't, call, don't think of it as a wall. It's more like a, just like a solid, a solid block like this. It's like this against the wall. And um, the, way that I, uh, the way that I want to explain it is this pulley is, is attached to A. This distance here is constant. It's always hanging from that pulley. The pulley is going to actually go up. So uh, we're going to have motion of A going up. As this goes up, VB is going to come down. And this angle is going to be constantly changing. So it'll look more and more like this over time. OK? So you've got a changing angle now with this rope. OK? OK, so we've established length of the rope is constant. Let's get past that. Next start, the, the, the next part is obviously, how do we get the lengths of rope that matter? Settling on the datum line. So where's the datum line in this case? Right. So this is, this is a pretty obvious datum line. Again, a little bit away from the ceiling. And it's really useful because it's going to cut through here, and it's going to be really, really close to where I measure this angle alpha of the rope to the horizontal. That's your datum line. And because A and B are both moving vertically upward, you can use the same datum line in this case. Perfectly fine, right? You don't have a change in direction. So now let's establish your SA and SB. SB is going to be down to here. Okay, so we'll do that right there. There's your, there's your bit of SB that matters, these four rope lengths here as B goes up. Okay? B also does not rotate as usual. Okay? And so SB, we're going to make B go down, so SB is going to increase. SA is the measurement that it's going to go up. So my SA should be this length right here. That makes perfect sense, right? So there's my SA and SB. OK, now the big challenge here is this diagonal length here. And I'm going to also call it H. But here's the trick. This problem, H is changing. It's a hypotenuse of a triangle. It's always changing. So let's, let's, write out our, let's write out our rope length equation and see what we can get out of it. OK, everyone still with me on this? OK, I've, I've completely ignored the little red bits of rope, by the way, by now, right? Because we're not going to look at those. So the question, no? no? OK, so let's do this. Let's go L is equal to constant. And so I'm going to go around. We're going to do 1SA, 1H, and we're going to do 4SBs. OK, not too bad. We're going to do one derivative, 0, when you take a derivative of a constant. And this will be VA plus DH DT plus 4VB. And dh by dt this time, not 0. OK? So how do we, how do we get at this? What's the, what's the solution here? How do we deal with that? OK, so the, the parameter that we've shown on the diagram, it's actually it's, it's giving you an angle. The angle is going to be changing. H is going to be changing. So the idea is use alpha instead of H. That might, that might help us a little bit. So let's, let's see what happens. We clearly know that because there is a triangle here, let's establish that there is also a distance from the wall to the pulley. Let's call that distance D. So this means that D is equal to H 
cosine alpha. Okay, and so if you rearrange h is equal to d over cos alpha, and then dh by dt is like a d by dt d cos alpha, right? And so this will be like a d sine alpha chain rule alpha dot divided by cos squared alpha, OK? Dot, dot, dot. OK? I can tell you that, I can tell you that this, this way gets you to the answer, but it's actually really, really difficult. Because even if I get you to this form, what are you constantly dealing with? You're, you're, going to be, you're going to be running into issues with finding things like, what exactly is alpha dot? I haven't given you information on alpha dot, right? You're, you're introducing a new variable into the problem. It doesn't seem like this dh by dt is helping you in any way, OK? So maybe we have to think of another, another strategy, OK? So other than trig, other than the fact that we have a cosine alpha, anybody else got any ideas on how to deal with triangles? Perhaps, yeah, go ahead. Pythagoras. Sorry? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Let's try that. OK, makes logical sense. Looks to me like I've got you know, two, 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 uh, all, all three variables for the triangle, right? I think it's going to be like this. h squared is equal to sa squared plus d squared. Right? Does that make sense? OK, so that, that's good. Maybe, maybe we can do the following. h is then the square root of sa squared plus d squared. OK, maybe I can take the derivative of this one. So dh by dt would be derivative of a square root. So now we're dealing with uh, the following. 1 over 2 square root sa squared plus d squared, something like that. And then chain rule the inside of this 2sa. Is that right? And then chain rule the sa, so this becomes sa dot. Right? So I did two chain rules there, one for the 2sa, then the derivative of sa, which is sa dot. Twos cancel. SA over square root of SA squared plus D squared. SA dot. OK. And here's the, really, here's the really nice thing. Guess what? This SA we know. This square root of SA plus D squared is what? Is an H. So this is an H. And SA dot is? BA. It's what we were looking for anyways. So let me put all this back together over here. All right? So let me do the following. It is now the it is now like this. I'm going to go to this line here. And this line says the following. 0 is VA plus all of that plus an SA over an H times a VA plus 4 BB. SA over H is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's sine of alpha. So this is VA plus sine alpha VA plus 4 VB. And therefore, VB is equal to negative 1 quarter of 1 plus sine alpha VA. Let me write that out again.
Okay. No need for alpha dot. Okay. So what I've what I've shown you is there were two methods at attacking this. There was a trigonometry type method. I, I incorporated angle alpha. Ended up being really challenging because I saw this alpha dot, and the alpha dot was a reminder that I don't think I'm going to be able to get to an answer where I have access to all the parameters. I then took the student's suggestion to do Pythagoras. And it seems to me that Pythagorean theorem allowed me to use these arguments to get back to my angle alpha, but in a very, very nice closed form that doesn't rely on alpha dot. Okay? And you can now see the pattern, again, linking the two velocities. You see VB is equal to something times VA, but in this particular case, you've got a little bit more complicated. It has an angle alpha involved in it. Okay? And as this angle alpha is changing, the ratio between VB and VA is also changing. OK, any questions on that? Yeah? Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, so the question is, can we leave it as SA over H? I think uh, for the purposes of this course, I would completely accept that answer, no problem. The reason is because just if you base it off of the diagram, uh, typically the problem will also say like express your answer in all the parameters and variables that have been given to you, right? That's a very common thing, even in your assignments. So I just wrote it this way because I gave you alpha, and I gave, and, and that that needed to show up there. Yeah. Say that again. Sorry, I can't hear the question. If you already have the value for angle alpha, you still can't use this formula v to be cos alpha because you don't have alpha dot, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if you went this route, you end up with things that you don't have access to. Okay. Right? So I'm, I'm saying try not to, when you see something like this, it's an, it's an indication to go another direction, OK? There's always, there's always more than one way to get at the answer, right? Remember that problem that I showed you with the radar tracking the rocket? Clearly two ways of getting at the answer. And there was a vector diagram method that I showed you that got at the answer in about five lines, right? So you gotta, you gotta practice more in order to see those types of differences. Okay, let me, let me bring up one other thing before I let you go. Um, just a few more notes here. I won't, I won't, do, another, I won't do another complete example. Um, but I think there's another, there's another really, oops. It's another really interesting twist that you'll see. All right. All right. So in this particular case, you've got three objects, right? And so the questions are always going to be like, oh, VA versus VB, VB versus VC, VA versus VC, right? How do you compare all three of them? Only, only two of these are independent, right? As soon as you know VA and VB and VB versus VC, you will automatically arrive at the third one, right? So there's two independent problems here because there are three objects. That means you're going to need two equations because you have two unknowns, right? But luckily for us, in cases like this when you have three objects, typically you have two ropes. So in this particular case, here's one rope. It actually went around this way. 
And this rope is a really, really good one for linking C and B, right? But you also have another rope. And the other rope is this one here. This is A and B only, right? And obviously, because they are connected um, indirectly through the pulley system, all three are going to be related to each other. But one rope is the clear link between A and B. The other one is the clear link between B and C. And so what does that mean? Two ropes. You apply the rule twice. Lengths of rope are constant. You take derivatives in each case, right? And then you equate them to, to, to relate all three of the blocks, right? So that's the first thing. Um, another note is I haven't really talked about acceleration. Um, what about acceleration? So let's say, you know, example, right? Let's say given that delta SA is equal to negative 5 delta SB, OK? So maybe the relationship is that one is five times faster than the other with a negative sign. And I've given you a bit of a trick here. I'm basically saying, oh, the change in the length of rope, delta, is that. Then what is velocity? Then this is just this divided by delta t. Take it to the limit as t approaches 0. So this is really va is negative 5 vb. Right? No surprise there. What do you think is going to happen to acceleration? It's the derivative of that. So that's it. Pretty much as soon as you know the relationship between velocity, right? Um, it means you just take a simple derivative and you get to acceleration. Um, but obviously, this one is a bit more complicated because if you then take the acceleration, you need the derivative. The derivative involves alpha. All of a sudden, you also have to take the derivative of alpha, right? So that one is a complicated case. Nevertheless, in most cases, if you end up with this, and we ask you for acceleration, you know what to do. Take the derivative. It should look like this. And you're clear. That's kind of why I never really discussed acceleration. The hardest part is getting to um, the rope lengths to velocity. And then as soon as you're there, getting to acceleration, you're, you're mostly in the clear. OK? Any, any further questions? Uh, sorry, say that again. You can, yeah. You can. You can. You can further develop that. I can tell you, it'll take it'll take quite a few more lines, but you can get there. You can get there. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. That concludes chapter twelve. The midterm is up to the end of this last sentence. Okay. Um, Next, next lecture, unfortunately, I, I won't be here. Uh, Professor Leslie Sinclair has agreed to do a substitute lecture in my place. Um, and, and it's unfortunate uh, because of my schedule. And I promised that I would make it up to her in some way. So maybe I'll substitute one of her lectures. Um, but you're all set for the midterm, all this material. She will start Friday's lecture with the beginning of chapter 13, which is kinetics, the forces that you get when you move objects. Okay. So see you, uh, see you next Monday, and then good luck with studying for the exam. <laughs>